thank you so much for allowing us to talk to you and have this conversation. Thank you it's for having me. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, it's lovely to have you here. And you are the first Asian American to hold the presidency of the Academy. How significant is having this title for you and also how big of a, of a responsibility this is for you as a person, for women, for your community, the community you represent? I feel uh, a great sense of pride and, and responsibility being one of the very few women and the first Asian American woman. Janet Yang, an award-winning Hollywood producer and president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, one of only four women to ever hold the position. And I think it's a sign of the changing times. I really feel that I can very much be myself in this role, that I don't have to conform to a, a, a different culture of the academy. Yang was born in Queens, New York, and raised by a family of Chinese immigrants. Do you feel that since you were elected, do you think the perception of the academy has changed? as in terms of there's more diversity. You represent diversity. People feel represented by you. We have a board of more women than men and a lot of people of color. And it's also become very evident in the pictures that get nominated each year. I feel really uh, so gratified that the Asian American community has a lot more visibility now and representation both in front of and behind the camera. And the Oscar goes to Michelle Yeoh. A testament of that visibility was Michelle Yeoh's historic Oscar last year, winning Best Actress for her role in Everything Everywhere All at Once, making her the first Asian woman to win the category at the Academy Awards in its nearly 100-year history. For all the little boys and girls who look like me watching tonight. But progress in Hollywood hasn't come easy. Yang helped pave the way with her 1993 iconic breakthrough movie, The Joy Luck Club. No talking in Chinese. How do I know you're not cheating? We are your auntie and we are very honest people. A barrier breaking film. Did you think it was going to get this huge? I had no idea. Nobody had any idea. It was a struggle to make. The film defied a lot of Hollywood rules. There was no president for an old Asian cast movie. No studio was willing to buy the idea. They would maybe make suggestions like, oh, can you put some more white people in there? We're like, no, we cannot. That would, <laughs> that would destroy the integrity of the book. It took a leap of faith. Jeffrey Katzenberg at Disney gave the movie a green light, but the roadblocks did not stop there. You said that at the time that you and the team had to pick the posters for the marketing of the movie, it was, it was a crazy moment. It was, it was a headache because there was discrimination. The marketing department seemed to be very hesitant to show Asian faces on the poster. And uh, we had, that was another battle so that we had to fight. And finally, it was released with the faces. The film has been credited for laying the foundations for another smash hit 25 years later, Crazy Rich Asians. I know this much. You will never be enough. I was very aware of the stereotypes that most people had about Asians, and I felt like I needed to change that when I found the opportunity. I saw a tool for helping change people's perceptions. Like, let people see these movies and, and see people who are very multidimensional, who are Asian. And that became my sort of mission and it continues to be my mission. For now, it's not, you know, just Asians. It's anybody who feels underrepresented. It is women. It is all people of color. It is LGBTQ for anyone who does not feel seen. Have you recently found yourself not belonging? Not so much as before. I think, well, first of all, that space in between that we were talking about earlier, any of us who come from a different culture, we're kind of used to straddling. And now even straddling has become something that's very common and very, very normalized in a way. Very few people, it seems these days, are 
living in the place where they were born and raised. So we've all left a piece of our hearts behind wherever we've lived. You know, you came from the Honduras and then you lived in Florida and now in New York. These are all very distinct places. And for myself, I've lived in New York, I've lived in China, I've lived uh, now in California for many years. And each place has its own personality and we take things from it and we, we give back to the communities that we've lived in, but it's, it's, it's all part of who we are. We're all very multifaceted. So I was very, very aware that I was different. And that feeling has lessened over the years. And coming to Hollywood at first, I felt a little out of place, but over time through mentors and through people I've worked with, there was a sense of, oh, I, I, I can belong. And over time, this has just increased. And now with the Asian American community and with women coming together more, there are so many places to belong. Yang says she's aware that the fight for the advancement of women isn't over. Right now, the top leadership positions in the industry are still not primarily held by women um, or women of color. So there is work to be done, but uh, there's also so much to be proud of the progress that we've already made. We have incredible talent development programs at the Academy, and there are many other such programs and initiatives that really uh, that have helped young women and, again, underrepresented communities feel like they can really belong and have a seat at the table. Why is it so important for you to have a space for women? Because I know, number one, what it feels like to not belong and I know what it feels like to belong. We need to do what men have done for so long, which is boost each other and create opportunities for one another and uplift one another. And I see that happening everywhere, and it makes me so happy. Yang is also co-founder of Gold House, a nonprofit that advocates and celebrates the contribution of the most notable and impactful Asian Pacific figures. I am so touched to just be amongst these incredible women. She's a member of the Committee of 100, an organization of the most prominent Chinese Americans, and a mentor and advocate for Asian and Pacific Islander women and non-binary filmmakers. You got a Chinese studies degree from Brown University, a business degree from Columbia University, not necessarily a film background. But so where does the love for Hollywood film comes from? Well, I loved movies growing up. I watched tons of movies and I watched movies that were probably well beyond my years because my sister is six years older and she would take me to the movies and I would see movies that normally the, the, a person my age shouldn't be seeing. So I love movies and, and, and my mother loved movies and we talked about movies at home and I loved, you know, loved watching television shows and I just never thought that it would intersect in my life. In, in any professional manner. I couldn't even dream about being in the movies. So it wasn't until all these various doors opened up and I found myself in Hollywood uh, at, at a studio, then selling American movies to China after I'd done the work in San Francisco. And then, then suddenly I'm on a movie set with Steven Spielberg working on a movie in China. So these are things I could not have possibly planned in my life. Yang rose to prominence through her work with Steven Spielberg on the 1987 film, Empire of the Sun. A desperate time, a world at war. Her vast film production credits include the Golden Globe winning movie, The People vs. Larry Flint, and the Oscar nominated animated feature, Over the Moon. It's just a silly myth. It's not a silly myth. It's real. I just feel like a very lucky person that my mission has been something that I was able to carry out and then some, and I have learned so much. I, I worked with so many wonderful filmmakers and, and um, just incredible talent. And, and so that mission is sort of the, what drove me. And then in the process, I just learned more and more about Hollywood and the incredible community and the collaboration that exists amongst us. I think that's the part, you know, getting back to that, that feeling of belonging. I think uh, a movie set is a great feeling to, uh, to have that sense of belonging. You become kind of a family. I think I just love that. 
Yang says her quest for elevating women, and especially women of color in Hollywood, continues and has a message for all young women pursuing their dreams in film. Keep the faith, follow your heart. There's no set timeline, but there is definitely progress, and they can be part of that change. They can follow their dreams and be part of that change. I've seen it in my own life, in droves. What does the future hold for you? I'm not sure. <laughs> a book? Possibly, possibly. What I really like about this role is being able to look at the big picture. There are many things happening in the industry that are, are really game changing. I think we are looking at how to keep the academy very relevant and I feel just overall it's important to be very, very conscious of, of the evolutions that are happening in the industry um, and everywhere in society and in the world. And uh, I think a lot about those big picture items. And um, yeah, I, I can't say exactly what it's going to look like. I have, uh, I have some ideas, but my life has been so unplanned in some ways. I cannot necessarily see that far ahead, but when the opportunity comes and it feels right, then I usually seize it. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.